Natural immunity and breakthrough infections have become buzzwords on the COVID scene, but the pictures become distorted and noisy. If you gain some immunity from COVID-19 by contracting it, and if breakthrough infections are possible after vaccination, should you even bother to get vaccinated? The answer is yes. We're hoping to help you understand why. That's the topic of this week's healthcare triage. To begin, no one is arguing that being infected with COVID-19 doesn't offer you some immunity against the disease. That's given. What is not given is how much or for how long. Considering the data available at the time this video was shot, it's unlikely that someone who's been infected with a mild case of COVID has come out of it with more immune protection than someone who's been fully vaccinated. It's possible that getting a more serious case offers higher protection, but this would likely vary between individuals, and if getting longer-lasting immunity requires getting severely ill, that doesn't seem like a winning choice. If you're standing at a fork in the road with the decision to either risk natural infection or get vaccinated, and you're concerned about the potential risks of vaccination, you have to weigh the potential risks of natural infection as well. While we have an idea of who is more at risk for severe disease in general, there are simply no guarantees. Risking infection to gain so-called natural immunity means you're putting yourself at risk for severe disease. Maybe you'll get lucky and get a manageable case of COVID, and maybe the odds are even in your favor in terms of age and health status, but gambling with your health can be scary. And while some perceive vaccination as a gamble, your risk of side effects in the vaccine are far, far lower than your risk of serious outcomes with COVID-19. So the smart bet's on vaccination. It's just that simple. And as we mentioned previously, your immunity likely isn't going to be great with a mild infection, so you'd probably still end up at risk for reinfection and the potential related health issues, including long-term health problems. And yes, reinfection is also possible with vaccination. We call this a breakthrough infection. No vaccine is 100% effective at preventing disease, so breakthrough infections can be expected, particularly when herd immunity has not been achieved. But please keep in mind that data suggests the rate of infection in unvaccinated people is significantly higher, like five times higher by some estimates, than the rate of breakthrough infections in vaccinated people. Before the Delta variant, that number was even higher for unvaccinated people. And how can we halt new variants? Vaccination. Another critical thing to remember is that even if you contract COVID after vaccination, your risk of hospitalization is enormously lower than if you were unvaccinated. As we discussed in the episode on boosters, the concern over severe disease and hospitalization is at the forefront of the fight against COVID-19. So to recap, yes, some immunity is to be expected following infection with COVID-19, but it's not likely to be greater than the amount you'd receive from vaccination unless perhaps you were quite ill and even then you can still get reinfected. And yes, Infection is possible, though much less possible, when vaccinated, but the level of immunity you gain is much more reliable, and you're also at lower risk for severe illness if a breakthrough infection were to occur. So I know you won't be surprised that this is our stance, but I'm going to say it anyway. Natural immunity isn't reliable protection from COVID-19. Whether you've had COVID or not, vaccination is truly the best way to protect your health and the health of those around you. Hey, did you enjoy this episode? You might enjoy this previous episode on COVID vaccination during pregnancy. We'd appreciate it if you'd like and subscribe down below and consider going to patreon.com slash healthcare triage where you can help support the show even during a global pandemic. We'd like to especially thank our research associates, James Glasgow, Joe Sevitz, Edward Lillaholm, and Brian Nam, and of course, our Surgeon Admiral Sam.